Covering news where you live, this is 5 News. Thanks for joining us for the top stories and weather on this Monday. I'm Tiffany Lee. There is some good news for workers in the natural state. According to data released from ADP Pay Insights, workers who have stayed in their job for at least 12 months saw their wages rise by over 4% compared to the same time last year. The median annual salary in Arkansas hit over $47,000. Additionally, the data shows that younger job stayers, including this year's recent graduates, are seeing higher pay growth than older age groups. Those between the ages of 16 and 24 say an 11.6 percent increase is what they've been seeing. It was a 7 percent increase for those between the ages of 25 and 34 and almost 5 percent increase for those between 35 and 54, a 3 percent increase for those 55 and over. The Arkansas Department of Finance and Administration reports that state revenue tax is up for May. Nearly 17% from May 2023, which is far above the forecasted 0.9%. A spokesperson for Arkansas Business says that the previous projection incorporated lower collections due to tax cuts that were passed in September special session. The rise in revenue increases the projected year in surplus to around $708 million. Meanwhile, tax collection saw a decrease from 2023, such as personal and corporate income taxes, as well as sales tax. The fiscal year ends on June 30th. And happening tonight, it's movie night at Puritan in Fayetteville. This event is free. The movie playing is Disney's The Lion King and will start at 8. You can reserve a table by emailing events at puritancoffeebeer.com. And today is the start of the 2024 Bentonville Film Festival. This will be the 10th year anniversary of promoting underrepresented voices of diverse storytellers. Premieres of films start tomorrow and last through Sunday, June 16th. This year's lineup will include more than 75 films and over 50 short films. If you want to check out this year's film festival, you better get your passes fast. They start at $100. We'll get to more of today's headlines in just a bit, but first let's check in with Zach for a look at today's forecast. All right, we're looking at a beautiful June day here across the area, lower 80s for northwest Arkansas, only mid to some upper 80s in the River Valley. We know it could be a lot hotter and it will be by the time we get into the weekend, so that's why you really got to soak in this as much as you can. We do get a lot of sunshine, a little bit of a north breeze today, about 5 to 10 miles per hour, driving in some drier air, so we're not having to deal with uh, the mugginess. We'll get lower humidity, really, for your Monday, your Tuesday, and even into Wednesday. It'll be after Wednesday that we really should see the mugginess starting to go up, becoming more uncomfortable by the time we get into the weekend. Uh, air still dry enough with clear skies, light winds, that we should see 50s and some low 60s mixed together going into Tuesday. Tuesday, not much change, maybe a degree or two, warmer at most in a few spots. Again, the heat will start to climb. We should see widespread 90s by Thursday and Friday. Thanks for that, Zach. Well, some of the hardest hit areas around Benton County were in rural communities. Five News reporter Parker Abels met with Senator Tyler Dees about how the cleanup effort in Decatur is moving forward. The impact of the EF3 tornado that hit Decatur has been felt by the entire western Benton County community. And while it's been hard on the residents who live there, Senator Tyler D. says he's proud of how the neighboring communities have come to help. An amazing response from, from people that have just said, hey, how can I help? We have uh, our neighboring communities of Silent Springs, Gentry, Gravit, all saying we want to come help and stand with Decatur. The Western Benton County Partnership has played a big role in helping the people of Decatur as well as advising residents on the best ways to give. I'm so thankful that we have organizations like the Western Benton County Partnership that are coming together and joining people together to, how, to tell them how to, how to give um, and creating spaces to uh, feed all the families and, and really help them get supplies. And Senator D says the students of the area have been especially impressive to watch serve. We had 41 students yesterday come out and just help clean off the debris on, on a farmer's land. This is stuff he, it would have taken him weeks, months, maybe even a year to get done that we helped knock out in a day. And the help from surrounding communities have brought hope to those impacted. I've met folks that have said uh, we've never felt supported like this before, not only in their own community, but in the surrounding communities. I met a lady the other day that said, I, I prayed for the first time in 10 years for help. And here comes lots and lots of help. FEMA has also been helping across Benton County. Um, but we want to make sure we get into every impact and neighborhood in the community. And Keith Jones, an external affair officer for FEMA, says rural areas like Decatur have been a priority. We made it a priority, um, especially since rural communities are underserved. Uh, we worked with the church out there and set up a mobile registration site off of uh, 
I think it's Fellowship Springs Road. And, you know, we've been trying to get those people applied for disaster assistance to get them the help they need. Indicator, covering news where you live, Parker Abel's 5 News. If you want to donate to the Western Benton County Partnership, you can go to their website and click Donate in the top right corner. You can also apply for FEMA by going to disasterassistance.gov or by simply calling them. Those are some of your top headlines on this Monday. Catch up with us again tomorrow. I'm Tiffany Lee.